how are you today? I'm very happy to be here. I think it's day 13 of the lockdown here in France, which is long, I'm not going to lie. It's a bit long not to see my family and uh, not to go outside, but I'm very grateful because I have a job, I can't keep working and teaching, so I mean, there are worse situations, of course. And today I wanted to help you with ideas on how to learn English during the lockdown. If you don't know, my name is Marion and I'm French, but I teach English, that's my job, I love it. Uh, I also have an Instagram account if you want to join, I post more things there. I'm trying to be consistent here on YouTube because I know it's very important for you guys to have one video every week. But if you want to have more content, free content, you can pop on Instagram and follow me there. I have been studying Spanish for a couple of months now. I'm taking lessons with a teacher and uh, it's been really difficult. I thought it would be easier, but it's also difficult because I had some breaks during my studying time. Uh, basically during the summer my teacher was on holiday for three weeks and then now with the lockdown I have another week off and it's a bit it's a bit on and off and more off than on so I'm going to give you all the things that I do for my Spanish but things you can do for your English as well okay so you can copy all my tips and do them in English to improve <laughs> first thing that I do is I select three days during the week where I study and work on my Spanish. So I would suggest for you to choose three days where you know you don't have a choice, it's written on your calendar where you know you have to study English. For me it's Monday, uh, Wednesday and Friday or Monday, Wednesday and Sunday depending on my work. So I know on these three specific days I study and what I do is I have a notebook where I write vocabulary, expressions, sentences, I work on the tenses etc. So I take my notebook and the first thing that I do is I review the last pages of the vocabulary. So it takes me 15 minutes maybe, so 15 minutes, I read the vocabulary of the last pages to, to, just to keep things in mind and to refresh things up a bit. So I have words, I have dates and I just read them. I try to say them out loud as well to work on my pronunciation, which is not great. <laughs> and I do that uh, for the first day. So on the first day, on Monday, I review all my vocabulary uh, read and say the words out loud. What I do then is I choose a podcast. I'm really into podcasts since the first lockdown, which is strange. I've never listened to one before, but since the first lockdown, I'm listening to podcasts. I love them, so I choose one in Spanish that I like, and you have tons in English. So choose a podcast that is matching your level, so choose a podcast that is easy if you are a beginner, a bit more difficult if you are intermediate, and then any subjects you would want or you would want to know if you are advanced. So choose a podcast, put your podcast on and try to write two or three words that you can hear in the podcast. I listened to a podcast in Spanish talking about taxes. So I wrote down the word taxes, uh, money, employment, companies, you know, just two or three words and sentences, that's really important because usually you can understand but it's difficult for you to recreate the sentences. So what I do is I write down sentences, even if it sounds easy, I write two or three sentences that I'm going to copy and use again, okay, and this is going to help a lot. And that's what I do on Monday. Okay, so vocabulary review, uh, pronunciation work, and then listening work. Now, for the other days, uh, what I do is just review tenses, examples, etc. So, I have a list, I'm going to put it here. I made a list, like a chart, of um, important tenses that I have in Spanish, but you can do the same in English. So, what I do, and I love to do that, is, for example, for the present simple, I have the different options for the present simple, the different forms, 
okay, with some examples, some, some verbs, examples. And then what I do, then what I do is write when to use it. So in which occasions, in which context, do I use the present simple? Okay, so that's the when you use it. So you have first your form, second, when you use it, and then third, Third, you have exceptions, examples, uh, maybe regular verbs, things like that. But what's very important is number one and two, okay? So you have your forms, how to use it, and then number two, you have when to use it, okay? Number three is also indications. What I call indications are words where if you see them, you know you have to use a specific tense. For example, for the present simple, if you have the word every day, you know it's your indication to use present simple or it could be past simple as well. But these indications are very important to learn. On the second day, that's what I do, I review tenses uh, and I write examples. So if I select, for example, um, be going to, then I read again the forms, the exceptions, the pronunciation, and I write examples. So I'm going to select an idea, for example, uh, my plans for the afternoon. And then I'm writing a short paragraph with different sentences and to use be going to in them. To think uh, a couple of minutes on these different ideas, on how to use be going to, just very, very helpful. And you usually remember your examples afterwards. Now on Sunday, I basically review everything. So I review lots of things, lots of vocabularies, I just read them again. Um, I also try to watch YouTube videos. So YouTube videos of Spanish teachers. So you can do the same with English teachers. I watch the videos and I select topics. For example, last time I selected a topic on holidays. So holidays vocabulary, going to the beach, uh, scuba diving, swimming, you know, just easy vocabulary. I'm a beginner in Spanish, so it's very useful for me. And the other video that I watched was on renting houses or apartments when you go on holidays. So perfect verbs to rent, and then words like expensive, cheap, very easy examples of how to improve in 10 minutes. And then again, I take my notebook, I write down the words that I think are interesting, useful for me and my level, that's very important. Don't write things you know you're not going to be able to use in the future. Write things that are at your level, things that are interesting for you to use or interesting for you to remember. And that's my weekly routine, really. So I do that three times a week. If you want more ideas like that, guys, I have a eight weeks weekly planner that you can download for free. Just need to click on the link in the description box and you can have eight weeks of ideas. So I listed my favorite websites, my favorite podcasts, my favorite uh, YouTube channels to learn English and um, also ideas like this week, I want you to select movie, select 10 words, write a paragraph with them, so things like that. Very specific things that you can implement every week, you can do every week, and in the long term, it's going to help you so much. The other thing that I want to mention is watch as many movies or series as you can. I watch movies and series every day in English. And it's quite difficult for me to choose one in Spanish because I don't really like Spanish series or movies. Um, so if you have a favorite one, please help me out and tell me. But in English you have lots, uh, lots of movies and series that are absolutely amazing. So my favorite ones that I've watched lately are, are The Queen's Gambit, which is a chess game player. Amazing, it's a short series. I mean, it's supposed to be a mini series, as I said, but I think it's eight or nine episodes, which is not mini at all. <laughs> and the other one that I've watched is The Hunting of Blind Manor, which was really good, uh, a bit scary, but not too much. And the story behind all the scary things are quite interesting. I really liked it. And now, um, the last series that I've watched lately is Ratchet, which I absolutely loved. Uh, it was fantastic. Again, to be scary, you see quite a lot of blood, so if you're not into that, don't watch it. If you don't like blood, don't watch it. Very good, and I love the actress. 
Other documentaries that I've watched. I love documentaries and if you like to watch documentaries, I recommend the first one, which is My Octopus Teacher. Great animal documentary. The second one that I watched is David Attenborough, uh, Alive on the Planet, or I think that's the title, which was absolutely amazing, heartbreaking. And the last one is on MMA fights. Uh, again, if you're not into violence, uh, if it's something that is bothering you, don't watch it. If you want some motivation and self-motivation, this documentary is absolutely amazing. And the title is uh, Notorious. It's from Conor McGregor, uh, the MMA fighter. Uh, it's an Irish fighter and it's um, a great source of inspiration. The last thing that I want you to do uh, when you're in lockdown is passive listening. Now I'm the first one to do this mistake, is not having enough passive listenings. What I mean by that is you need a lot of passive listening when you do other things. So, for example, if you're washing the dishes, so you, you're, you're cooking your dinner, you have lots of dishes everywhere to wash because you don't have a dishwasher. Uh, I don't know how you live, by the way. <laughs> I, the first thing that I bought when I moved in uh, was a dishwasher. Uh, after a couple of months, we said, no, we need a dishwasher. So when you wash the dishes or when you cook, when you clean something, put on some music, okay? Put on some music in English, put on some podcasts in English, uh, turn on a YouTube video in English. Even if you don't pay attention 100%, it's going to help so much. Um, not after one listening, of course, but it's going to help so much in the long run, you're going to see a difference, a massive difference in your listening comprehension and in your pronunciation because you surround yourself with the language. I don't mean 24-7, but maybe three times a day when you go to work, if you have the possibility to go to work, uh, just listen to something in English. I promise you it's very, very efficient, so it works a lot if you do this. And I can't see a difference the days where I listen to podcasts or I put some music on in Spanish because my brain starts to think in Spanish and um, it's easier to analyze than videos. So it works a lot, it really does. Okay guys, these are my options for you. So again, select two or three days a week where you know you don't have a choice to work on specific things. And then every day I want you to put on something in English, okay? Choose what you like, if it's music, if it's podcast, maybe mix everything and then use that every day, okay? As a passive listening. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in your next video, which is going to be about verbs when you go shopping. Common verbs, phrasal verbs, great vocabulary. Okay guys, see you next time. Bye.